Today, we want to look, uh, continue looking at graphs of sine and cosine. We had another problem where I asked you to write an equation and then collectively as a class write multiple equations for this function that I've shown in the graph. Now, this is different than the problems that we had before. Before I had given you more points to work with. In this problem, I gave you a couple of points for the top and I gave you a couple of points for the bottom, but that's it. I didn't tell you any of the middle points. So what makes this problem different is that I didn't give you any of the points in the middle. So we're gonna have to do some different stuff to figure out where the middle is. And we're also gonna have to do some extra stuff to figure out the amplitude. The period still works the same way. So the difference in this problem is that I've taken some information away. I've taken any indication of where the middle is. So to get the sine graphs, we're gonna to have to figure out where those starting points are. And also for any of the graphs, we're gonna to have to figure out the amplitude. So let's review the things that we need to find. So A is the amplitude. B is a number that indicates the period. So we have to figure out B. So B is two pi divided by the period. This comes from the fact that the period is two pi divided by B. B says how fast we're going around the circle. So if B is two, we're going around the circle twice as fast. And so the period will be pi. C is what we've been calling the start, even though the graph goes on forever in both directions. So I'll put it in quotes so that we recognize that we're being fishy. It's just where we think the graph starts. And this will change depending on whether we choose the top, the bottom, the middle going up or the middle going down. It's the, specifically, it's the X coordinate of what we choose to be the start. And then D is the middle. So let's take a look at the given information and figure out each of these pieces of information. We don't, uh, the plus D part is gonna be where the middle is, but we don't have any middle information. A is gonna be the amplitude, which is the distance from the middle to the top and also the distance from the middle to the bottom. So A is the distance from the middle to the top and also the distance from the middle to the bottom. We don't know where the middle is, so we can't just read off what that is. However, the distance from the top to the bottom is gonna be 2A and we can calculate that. So I can go from the distance, the, take the distance from the top all the way to the bottom and say that that's gonna be 2a. And then to find that distance, I just have to take the top and subtract the bottom. Five minus a negative nine is 14. So I don't know what the amplitude is, but I know what two amplitudes is. So now I know what the amplitude is. Since 2a is equal to 14, we can figure out that a must be equal to seven. So I've got my amplitude. My amplitude is seven. One of the four things that I need. Now that I know that the amplitude is seven, we can figure out where the middle is supposed to be. So if the middle plus the amplitude will land us at five, I can use that to figure out uh, where the middle is. So the middle, the middle D plus the amplitude will get us to the top. So I don't know what the middle is, but I know the amplitude and I know where the top is. So 
So if the amplitude is seven, and we know that the top is at five, we can use that to figure out where the middle is. So the middle is five minus seven or negative two. We could have also done this using the middle and the negative nine. If I take the middle, which is the D, and I subtract A, that will put us at the bottom of the graph. And the bottom of the graph is at negative nine. So if I add seven, I can calculate D is still negative two. If I got two different values for where the middle was, then one of them must be wrong. So I've got the amplitude. I've got the middle. I've got all of my vertical stuff sorted out. So whatever, wherever these points are, I know that the Y coordinate is all gonna be a negative two. I need to sort out what B is by looking at the period and the period will be the difference between any two top points, any two bottom points, any two middle going up or middle going down, any two top, any two bottom, any two middle going up or middle going down. So. The period, I'm gonna go from the bottom to the bottom over here, and the period is a change in X. So the period is gonna be 21 minus a negative three. So the period is 21 minus negative three, which is 21 plus three, which is 24. So the period is 24 can double check that against the other information that I have. From nine, if I take nine plus 24, uh, plus 24, I end up at 33. So that seems to check out. So the period up here between the top and the next top is also 24. So I can use any two points that are in the same place and figure out the period. So now I can use that to find B. So B is two pi divided by the period. So B is gonna be two pi divided by the period of 24. And then I can simplify two over 24, B is pi over 12. So we can use this information to write a couple of cosine graphs. We don't have to know where any of the middle points are. We can write some cosine graphs right away. So let's do that. Let's make sure we have an answer to the problem. And then we'll go looking for trouble. Oops. So let's pick a starting point. I wanna start at this point, negative three, negative nine. So I'll, I'll pick a bottom starting point. So negative three, negative nine is at the bottom. And so that tells me that C, is, that tells us two things. Starting at the bottom means we're gonna be writing a negative cosine. Starting at the bottom means we're gonna be writing a negative cosine. And the X coordinates of our starting point is going to be the value of C. So when we make a choice of where we start, we get two things. The form that we're gonna use, positive or negative sine, positive or negative cosine, and the X coordinates 
that will be the C, uh, of that point will be the C. So we're writing a negative cosine because we're starting off at the bottom. So we write negative amplitude seven cosine Then the stuff that happens before the cosine is B is multiplying by pi over 12. And the formula says X minus, and we're subtracting a negative three. So it looks like X plus three. And then we add D, so and D is negative two. So here is one possible equation for this graph. If we switch over to Desmos, oh my gosh, Desmos wasn't open yet. Okay, so now if we switch over to Desmos, we can graph y equals a negative seven cosine y equals, there we go, negative seven cosine of pi over 12 times x plus three, close parentheses, close parentheses, and then subtract two. And then we'll kind of zoom out. And then we'll say, hey, it wasn't a red graph. This one was an orange one. And this has the points that we want, negative three, negative nine. Our top is at nine, five, 21, negative nine, and 33, and five. So this certainly fits that description. But there are others. It's like friggin' Skywalkers, they're everywhere. Skywalkers are cockroaches of the uh, Star Wars world. They're just everywhere. So we can start at this other point, 21, nine, in which case we'll be starting at the bottom. So it's still a negative cosine. The amplitude is still seven. The period is still 24. But now we say X minus uh, 21, because the C is 21. Close parentheses, close parentheses, and the middle is still at negative two. We're just shifting horizontally to a different place to consider to be the start. So here are a couple of descriptions using negative cosine. We can also write description using positive cosine where C can be nine or 33. So I could write uh, seven, neg uh, positive seven cosine of pi over 12 times X minus nine minus two. So if we switch over to the graph, if I type Y equals positive seven times a cosine of pi over 12 times x minus nine minus two, I would get the same graph with our bottom at ne negative three, negative nine, the next bottom at 21, negative nine, then the top at nine, five, and the next top at 33, five. What we want to figure out is where those middle points are. Notice that the highlighted points here on the x-axis are not at the middle. This point, these points are where y is equal to zero, and that is not halfway between five and negative nine. Halfway between five and negative nine is two. If I draw the middle, y equals negative two, I've been using purple for the middle. Notice that there's these, we're not looking at the for the x-intercepts. 
going to let me find these points. Oh, I won't lock onto those points. Why do me like that, Desmos? So notice that at this point, negative nine, negative two, that's a point in the middle going down. And then here's a point three, negative two. That's a point at the middle going up. Let's figure out how we can get those x coordinates. We know we have the y coordinates because we know where the middle is. So let's try to figure out where those middle points are. We know all the y coordinates are negative two. What we want to notice is that one, the, each period goes from bottom to the bottom and it divides, we're dividing the circle up into four quadrants. So since we have a period of 24, half of a period is 12. That's the distance from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. So the thing, some values that we care about the period is equal to 24. Half of a period is equal to 12. Half of a period is going to be the distance from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom horizontally. Or it's going to be the distance from the middle going up to the middle going down because we've only done half of a cycle. From the middle going down to the middle going up, half of a cycle. So half of a period of 12 will be the horizontal distance from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom, from the middle going up to the middle going down, or from the middle going down to the middle going up. One quarter of the period will be half of a half of a period, which will be six. So that would be the distance from the bottom to the middle going up to the, from the middle going up to the top, from the top to the middle going down, from the middle going down to the bottom. So the one quarter of the period is six, and that'll be the distance from this bottom point to this point, which is the middle going up. So from negative three, negative nine, the middle going up will be six units horizontally from that point. So negative three plus six, What's that point? Negative uh, three plus six. Is gonna be positive three. And so that's one of the points that we saw on our graph. That's gonna be at three and the mills are all negative two no longer a mystery point. If we look at the plus three and add six to it, we'll be at the nine. So plus six will get us up to a nine. So the plus three plus another quarter period will land us at plus nine, which is at the top. And then if we want to get to the point where we have the middle going down, we'll start to take the top, add a quarter of a period. And that will be the X coordinate of the mid going down. So this point will be at uh, 15, negative two, no longer a mystery. If we go from the start at the mid going down, this is all horizontal stuff and add say, another quarter period, that'll put us at 21 and that's back to the bottom. 
because we've added a quarter period four times, so we've added one whole period. That puts us at 21.9. Then if we add six again, uh, 21 plus six is gonna be 27. So at this point, we'll be at 27, negative two. 27 plus six is gonna put us at 33. So it's all lining up. Notice that one period is from the middle going up to the middle going up. So three plus 24 will also put us at 27. So that's all working out. If I go backwards from negative three, a quarter of a period, that tells us that this point should be at negative nine, negative two. That's one that we saw. But if we go from the middle going up back half of a period, three minus 12 will be at negative nine. And if we go from 15 back an entire period, 15 minus nine, 15 minus 24 is negative nine. So everything seems to line up. We can figure out where those middle period, middle points are by looking at how far, looking at the period and just breaking up the period. Any questions? So now we can write some more equations for this graph. I can pick any of these middle points. So I can say, start off at three, negative two. If I start at three, negative two, that'll be a midpoint going, a middle point going up. Starting at the middle going up means we're starting with, we're doing a positive sign and three will be C. So my equation should say y equals, it's start off with a positive sign. A is seven. Because we're just changing our perspective of where things are starting. B is still pi over 12. In parentheses, I have x minus, and in this case, we're subtracting c, which is three. Then we close parentheses and we subtract two. So here's an equation for that graph written as positive sign. We switch over to the graphing calculator. Let's put in y equals positive seven times the sine of pi over 12 times x minus three minus two. And we're right on top of the previous graphs. And you can still see the bottom is at negative three, negative nine. Can't see them, I'll turn them off anyway. Negative, uh, bottom's at negative three, negative nine. The top is at nine, five. And our middle points are three, negative two, 15, negative two, 27, negative two, and negative nine, negative two. Any questions? We could also write an equation in terms of a negative sign. So a uh, negative sign would be using one of these uh, middle midpoints going down. So I could write y equals negative, negative seven times a sign of still pi over 12 because the period hasn't changed. But now we'll have x minus a negative nine minus two. We would write that as x plus nine but there's the negative nine, negative two in the middle and all the points that we had previously found. So the trick in this problem was I only gave you the top points and the bottom points. 
that still demonstrated two places where we had the period we could read, but we had to divide the period up into four into quarter periods to figure out where the midpoints were horizontally. We had an amplitude. Well, we, we were able to look at two amplitudes. That's the difference between five and negative nine. So we had to cut that in half to figure out what the amplitude is so we could find the middle vertically. Any questions? Comments? Deep thoughts? So now the question I have for myself at least is, am I going to be capable of not writing four equations every time I just need to write an equation? I think the answer is going to be no. Because when I'm faced with the prospect of answering a yes or no question, but it's a topic on which I have elaborated in the past, I am probably going to elaborate unless someone stops me. The next thing that we want to do is we want to look, so what we're doing here is we're starting off with a graph. The next thing we want to do is to look out of the class and look into the world to try to find an example of a sinusoidal function. So look for an example of a sinusoidal function, not just of things that oscillate, but we also want to try to quantify them. So find something that can be modeled, find something that can be modeled with a sinusoidal graph, but don't just stop there. Try to find an equation that will model that periodic behavior. Identify and do the same thing that we did in the, dis the two discussions we've had so far. Identify an amplitude, a period, a middle, and some kind of starting point. And then we can use that to extrapolate data. Tides are a good example. The great thing is in the internet age, we are awash with data. We are flooded with data. But the bad thing is in the internet age, we are flooded with data. And so there's a lot of things that you could think of, you can choose. So look up some tide information, pick your favorite beach, look up some tide information, figure out what high tide is. How do we determine what high tide is? What are we measuring? And then figure out when low tide is and how are we determining high, the high tide and low tide? Speaking of tides, the period would be the distance, the, time, the amount of time between low tide and the next low tide. So that would just be a ba based on time, but what are we gonna be measuring up and down? How do we measure that in terms of tides? So that's an excellent example. But remember, we need two things, a horizontal thing and a vertical thing a horizontal quantity and a vertical quantity. All right, that will be the third discussion on our graphs of sine and cosine. And then there will be a fourth one where I give you some misleading information and see if you can see past it. That's gonna do it for today. Uh, we'll see y'all on, oh, actually I won't see you at all next week. Next week is spring break. So I'll see you the following Monday and then we'll do all this all over again because we'll have forgotten it over spring break. Not, not that anybody's going anywhere during spring break. All right, that's it for this week. Everybody have a nice spring break. I'll see you when we get back and thanks for playing. Don't go to Florida. <laughs>